Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how we can update the state of an array of objects. If you're able to comprehend this lesson and you've watched previous topics, we'll be ready to make a few projects in React. So let's get started. Like we've done in prior lessons, be sure to import the useState hook. In this topic, we're not going to create one state variable, but four. Const cars. Cars is going to be an array of objects. Then we need a setter for our array of cars. Equals use state. I'm going to set the initial state to be an empty array. Then we will create a state variable for the cars year and a setter for car year. Use state. If we're going to be adding car objects, to make it easier for me, I could set the initial state to be a year like 2024, something that's kind of recent, but I think it would be a lot cooler if we use JavaScript to get the current year. Right now I'm filming this video in December 2023. For the initial state, I'm going to create a new date object, then get the full year method. For me, this is going to return 2023, but depending on when you're watching this video, it might be later. We'll create a state variable for our cars make. Who manufactured the car? Set car make equals use state. I will set the initial state to be an empty string. Then we need the model. I'll just copy this because I'm lazy. Change make to be model. Set car model. The initial state for the model will be a string. All right, now we're going to declare all the functions we'll need throughout this application. We'll create a function to add a car, remove a car, change the year, change the make, change the model. Five functions total. We'll declare a function to handle add car. Then a function to handle remove car. There is one parameter, an index. What is the index of the object that we're removing from this array? We need a handler for year, make, and model. Function handle year change. There is one parameter, an event. That will be provided to us through the onChange event handler. We need a function to handle make change, handle make change, and handle model change. So we should have five functions total, add car, remove car, change the year, change the make, change the model. Let's create our HTML elements. So within our return statement, I will create a div to enclose everything. Let's create an H2 element for a heading. List of car objects. Afterwards, I will create an unordered list. We will populate this unordered list later. We will create three input elements for the year, the make, and the model of our car that we're trying to add. We will begin with input that has a type of number. I will set the value to equal the state of car year. And for me, that's 2023. That's because I'm creating a date object of the current date and time, then returning the year. Depending on what year you're watching this, it might be different. I will set the on change event handler equal to a callback to handle year change. I'll add a break afterwards. Okay, let's copy this input element, including the break. The type of the second input element will be text. The value will be the car's make. Who made the car? The onChange event handler will be a callback to handle make change. We should add a placeholder to tell the user what we want them to type in. It's not very apparent. I'll put this on a new line for readability. I will set the placeholder attribute equal to enter car make. Let's copy this element, paste it. For the third input element, the value will be car model. 
the onChange event handler will be a callback to handle model change. The placeholder will be enter car model. Then we'll create a button to submit our car object. Button. The text on the button will be add car. We will set the on click event handler equal to handle add car. All right, now we have to fill in these functions. We'll begin with handle year change because it's easy. We will use the setter for set car year. We will pass in access our event object that's provided to us, access its target, access its value. Then we have to do this with make and model. Set car make, access the value of the target of the event. Pass it as an argument. Set car model. Again, take our event, access its target, access its value. So now we should be able to update these values. Let's try it. When I click on the button, I would like to add this object to my array of objects. Within our handle add car function, we have a few things to write. It's not as complicated as what you think it might be. Using these state variables of year, make, and model, we will create a new car. const new car equals a JavaScript object with these properties. The year will equal the current state of car year. The make will equal the current state of car make. The model will equal the current state of car model. Then just for readability, I'm going to put all these properties on a new line. Not necessary, but I find it easier to read. We will use the setter for our array of car objects. We will use an updater function. We will take cars, arrow, create a new array, use the spread operator on cars. We need to copy the previous elements over to the new array. We don't want to lose them. Then we will add a new element our new car object. So we don't want to use the current state of cars, but rather the previous state with this updater function. A common naming convention for your parameter is to use the first letter of that state variable. Let's rename cars as C. So what we're going to do now is go to our unordered list. We need to populate it with list items. I will embed some JavaScript, take our array of cars, Use the built-in map method to return a new array. We're provided with two arguments, an element and an index with the map method. But I'm going to rename element as car, so it's more understandable. What would we like to do? I'll use an arrow function. We will return a list item element. And for readability, I'm just going to place these on a new line. React wants us to add a key to each list item element. So let's take care of that. I will set the key of each list item element to be our index that's provided to us. Within each list item element, I will display the car's year, followed by the car's make, and the car's model. All right, let's see if this works. Let's add a 2023 Ford Mustang, and that worked. How about a 2024 Chevrolet Corvette and a 2022 Dodge Challenger? One thing I'm going to add to the handle add car function after submitting a car, I would like to reset these values. At the end of this function, let's use the setters. I will set the car year when we're done with it to be the current year. We'll create a new date object, get the full year, update the state to whatever values returned. We'll use the setter for the car make and reset it to be an empty string. Same thing with the car model. All right, let's see if this resets. 2023 Ford Mustang, and it does. 2025. Chevrolet Camaro 
and that does reset. You can see that my year went back to 2023, even though I adjusted it to 2025. The make and model were both replaced with empty strings. Now I would like to remove a car when I click on one of these list item elements. We'll make one change to the opening list item tag. I will set the on click event handler to a callback to handle remove car. We do have to pass in an argument though to this function. We have to pass in an index. What is the index of the car we're trying to remove? If I attempt to pass in an argument, we will call this function right away. We will convert this callback to an arrow function that has no parameters. So within the handle remove car function, there's not a lot to write. We will use the setter for our cars. We'll use an updater function. We don't want to use cars, but we'll use the first letter to indicate we're working with the previous state. Arrow, take the previous state of our array of cars represented as C, use the built-in filter method. We will filter any cars that don't meet a certain criteria. The filter method provides us with an element and an index, but we do have a naming conflict. We already have a parameter with the name of index. Let's rename the index of each element within our array as I. Then do this with an arrow function. We'll write our condition. Check to see if the index of the current element, I, is not strictly equal to the index we would like to remove. We'll filter out that element when we create a new array. So we're not working with the current element, even though it's provided to us. So what people do is a convention. If you have a parameter you're not using, people will change the name of that parameter to be an underscore. That tells other people to ignore this parameter. And that should work. Let's run and test everything. Let's add a 2023 Ford Mustang, but feel free to pick some different cars. 2024 Chevrolet Corvette. 2022 Dodge Challenger. And I should be able to remove a car when I click on it, that list item element. Our Corvette is gone, our Mustang, and our Challenger. All right, everybody, so that is how to create an array of objects and update their state using React.